Hello everybody and welcome to my newest SQL Server Quickie. In one of my previous SQL Server Quickies, I have talked about the fundamental concepts of clustered indexes and today I'm talking about non-clustered indexes in SQL Server. A non-clustered index is just a secondary index that you can define on your table. SQL Server supports non-clustered indexes on clustered tables and also on tables without a clustered index, so-called heap tables. When I am speaking about non-clustered indexes, I always have a book in my mind, like a DSQL language reference. The pages in that book are ordered by the various DSQL commands, so in the first step the book is a clustered index. And in addition, you have in the back of the book an index where you can also search for a specific DSQL command. For example, when you want to find further information about the create table statement, you can look into the index in the back of the book and as a result you are getting back a page number where the exact details about that specific comment are described in more detail. Therefore, you have afterwards to navigate from the index into the book itself, the clustered index, to get the additional data that is not part of the index in the back of the book. This is mainly the concept used by non-clustered indexes in SQL Server. So let's move now over to the flip chart where I'm describing you the basic idea about non-clustered indexes. I want to demonstrate you now on the flip chart how a non-clustered index works in SQL Server. Imagine we have a simple table definition, we have a first column integer data type, we have defined a clustered index on it, and on some column, like a column city, we create now a non-clustered index. So in the first step, SQL Server creates the leaf level of our non-clustered index. As you can see, we have here a chart 2000 column, simple one, means we can store two records on one page in the leaf level. In reality, SQL Server only allows you here a maximum key length of 900 bytes or 16 columns when you are dealing with a composite key. So the 2000 are just easy for describing the concepts of a non-clustered index on the flip chart. So we have our leaf level, means the data in the leaf level is ordered by that column. So maybe we have here some cities with A, like Amsterdam, we have here B, like Berlin, Maybe we have a T for Tüsseldorf. We have W for Wien, Vienna. Finally, Z for Zurich. Again, every page has a page number. Let's say we have here 200, 201, 202, 203. And afterwards, SQL Server creates the navigation structure. Let's assume we have our index root page and we have two intermediate level pages. So again, very nice tree structure. We have here the page ideas, let's say 250, 251. And again, SQL Server stores the lowest level, the lowest value of the level below. So we have here A on page 200. We have here a P on page 201, we have here W on page 202, and we have here Z on page 203. Finally, we have our index root page. We have here A on page ID 250, and we have W on page ID 251. Assume we have here page ID of 300. So very easy to create a non-clustered index on a secondary column like here the city column. Again, when we are accessing that non-clustered index, we can make use of the navigation structure, means we are making a very efficient SQL operation. 
we're doing our first page read for the index root page, second page read for the intermediate level page, and finally with the third page read we are down in the leaf level where we are finding our data. Of course, when you look here, when we're doing, let's say, select star from table where ct equals Zurich means we are able to make the seek with three page reads, but as you can see in the leaf level, we are missing the data itself because the non-clustered index in the leaf level has only the city column and the clustered index key as a logical pointer. In that case, SQL Server has to make a so-called bookmark lookup Bookmark lookup and retrieve the additional data from the clustered index. Bookmark lookups are very, very expensive, especially then when your statistics are not accurate or you're dealing with parameter sniffing programs. And bookmark lookups can also lead to bookmark lookup deadlocks when you have a concurrent write activity in your clustered index. So, normally, you should make sure that you are not using bookmark lookups very extensively. For example, you can create a covering non-clustered index. And besides the C corporation, we also have the possibility to make a forward or backward scan because those pages are again interlinked in the leaf level of the non-clustered index. So as you can see, non-clustered index internally from the structure almost the same as a clustered index, SQL Server is using here again a B2 structure. Now we are switching over to SQL Server Management Studio and I will show you how these structures are looking, are looking internally in SQL Server. In the first step of this demo, I'm creating a new table. As you can see from the table definition, every record is 400 bytes long. Therefore, SQL Server is able to store 20 records on a page of 8 kilobytes. Afterwards, I'm creating a unique clustered index on the first column, Custom ID. And finally, I'm inserting 80,000 records into that, into that table. In the next step, I'm creating a non-unique, non-clustered index on the column customer name. Non-unique means that we can have duplicate key values in the key column, which is for almost the majority of our non-clustered indexes the case. With the dynamic management function, SysDMDB index physical stats, I'm retrieving the physical statistics of the created non-clustered index. As you can see from the output, our non-clustered index consists of three levels. We have the leaf level, the intermediate level, and finally the root level with one index root page. In the next step, I'm creating a simple helper table in which we store the output of the dbcc int command that we execute in the next step. With a simple select statement against the helper table, I'm retrieving the one and only index root page. We are using that page ID in the next step to dump out the page with the dbcc page command. But before we do that, we enable the trace flag 3604 so that we are getting back the results from the dbcc page command. As you can see from the output, the index root page of the non-clustered index stores 16 rows. SQL Server stores here the key column of the non-clustered index and because we have created a non-unique non-clustered index, the clustered key is also stored. This is a very important thing to remember. In a non-unique non-clustered index, the clustered key column is also part of the navigation structure of the non-clustered index. This also means that you can get a very large navigation structure when you have a very large clustered key like a unique identifier column. Therefore, the choosing of the correct clustered key is a very important topic in SQL Server. The clustered key is needed here to make our index records unique 
because the non-clustered key itself isn't unique. I'm taking here now the seventh page ID and using it to dump out the next level of the non-clustered index. As you can see from the output, the intermediate level page has the same structure as our index root page. Again, we have the clustered key so that we are dealing with unique index records on the index page. And finally, I'm taking another page ID and dumping out a leaf level page of the non-clustered index. In the leaf level, you always have the clustered key as a logical pointer to the data itself. Just think back to the DSQL language reference book. At the end of the book, where the index resides, you also have a page number as a logical pointer. And you are following this page number to get the details about the DSQL statement that you have looked up. And the same concept applies to non-clustered indexes in SQL Server. The clustered key is used as a lookup value for retrieving additional data from the clustered index. When you have referenced in your select statement columns that are not part of the chosen non-clustered index, then SQL Server has to perform a so-called bookmark lookup. And bookmark lookups can be very dangerous in SQL Server. In this SQL Server Quickie, you have seen the basic concepts about non-clustered indexes in SQL Server. As you have seen, SQL Server uses internally a B tree to structure the index. It's the same concept as with clustered indexes. The key of the non-clustered index defines the physical sorting order of the records in the leaf level. You have also seen how a non-clustered index looks like internally and why SQL Server needs the clustered key or the row identifier as a lookup value. I hope that you have enjoyed the SQL Server Quickie and I also hope that you have now a better understanding about non-clustered indexes in SQL Server and what are the differences to clustered indexes. Thanks for watching and see you very soon in one of my next SQL Server Quickies.